It is another Light News Radio. Self-empowerment for the whole human being. The place where sick and tired is no longer of oneself. Featuring your host, Dr. Richard Jelisich, and co-host, Deirdre Layton. Together, they finish each other's sentences, laugh, and take you from feeling hopeless to overjoyed to rock your world. And now, here are your hosts, Dr. J and Deirdre. Welcome back to the Light News Radio Studios, where you will find the realms of self-empowerment. Light News Radio brings you spiritually conscious, awakened people who are walking their spiritual talk. I am Dr. J, your host, and my co-host, Queen of the Universe and Cosmic Social Director, is Deirdre Layton. We are coming to you live on iHeartRadio and Spreaker Radio. Together, we bring you grounded metaphysics, where the spiritual rubber hits the road, real-life teachings and applications that are grounded and relevant to you. Here you will find the safety way, as my teacher would put it, a place where you can breathe fresh air of grounded spirituality while avoiding the hype and the fascination. We are all about helping you to empower your life through understanding your true spiritual nature. So come aboard our beam of light and enlighten your load as we travel the waves of knowledge and wisdom for the next half hour. Hello, Deirdre. Hello, Richard. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. Uh, it's going to be a great show today. You know, I'm glad that we finally, you know, jumped over that fence and decided that, listeners, we're going to pump you full of information on the chakras over the next couple of shows. And mm -hmm. so, you know, today we're going to do that and get started. But if you were going to call in today, I'm sorry, but we've got some glitches with our Skype and that can't happen. But you're more than welcome to email me at info at lightnews.org or to send us a text message um, through Twitter or visit our website at www.lightnews.org and leave some information and questions there. Of course, Bold Radio has an opportunity if you go to the Bold Radio station through Breaker Radio, you can always type in any questions um, there, of course. So, you know, there's lots of opportunity to get a hold of us, and uh, I'm really excited about today's show. Yeah, we have a really great show. The third chakra, <clears throat> of course, one of seven, and the chakras have been my seminal work since the early 90s, and it's just one of those subjects that you really can't exhaust because it's been written about for centuries you know, what are the chakras as the energy centers of the body? And even though, you know, we only have a half hour, I thought we'd hit some of the highlights of the third chakra and what it represents. It is the one that is above the navel, often called solar plexus. The Hindu name is Manipura, and it is the chakra of the self or personal power. It's personal identity, power, and truth, meaning your truth. And every chakra is open. They're never closed. They're never blocked, but most chakras are not awakened. But every chakra center has at least one major psychic ability, and that is, Deirdre? One major psychic ability. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm reading something totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a romance novel. <laughs> But the 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 it is the I am it, the, that chakra is you know at the center of a person's reality. It's it's the essence of the thing itself, right? Like it's who you are. Oh my goodness, you really caught me bad that time. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm reading ahead in the notes that you sent me, and I had no no. It, uh, <laughs> Okay, listen, I need to take a breath. Oh, <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> oh, my God, you're in the next room, and here I am. You know, but there you go. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so the third chakra, main psychic ability, is called incisiveness. incisiveness. And yeah. think, of, think of chakras in the same way as you would brainwave activity. All of our brain waves are active all the time, alpha, theta, delta, beta. And so all chakras are active. They're on all the time. Every chakra has at least one psychic ability <clears throat> or more, and they're on all the time. It's just that as human beings, <clears throat> we've kind of relegated this information to yogis and swamis and gurus, 
you know, esoteric knowledge, and it's time to externalize this knowledge to help all human beings understand how connected they are energetically, intuitively, and consciously to each other and to all things. That makes sense, huh, Dee? It does make sense, right? Like when you're looking at the third chakra, you're you're looking at, you know, truth versus harmony. You're looking at um, coming up with the different aspects and attributes to to who you are with representation to the self, um, right. you know, like, and it could involve manipulation, either good or bad. It could be manipulation to the self. It could be, you know, who you really are as an authentic human being and that, uh, that person that you are meant to be here to be. And so it's, it's really kind of interesting because the third chakra is, is huge on, um, understanding the well i want to say the wisdom of who you are and and what Mm -hmm. you represent here right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so you know it it can be very a very personal chakra in the sense that uh it has higher and lower aspects and quite often you may be uh experiencing those aspects of who you are without even noticing what it represents, such as anger, resentment, um, you know, those type of things. But also it can be great joy, great understanding and the power of, of um, faith and trust, right? Mm-hmm. So it's got quite it's got quite a fluctuation, that chakra. Well, it is the chakra of the self, the uniqueness. You know, in some teachings it's called the sun chakra or surya, S-U-R-Y-A. Um, but it's a... Uh, it, it's an amazing chakra of the self in that when it's not awakened, we can be very self-absorbed. You know, it's all about me. It's all about my joy, my health, my stuff. And as the teachers write about it becoming emancipated or beginning to awaken, you start to become more selfless. Like, for instance, if you went over to your mother's house and you swept out the entranceway and then you left and your mother didn't even know you were there, so you looked for no gratitude or acknowledgement, but you did something nice for someone. In fact, the teachers talk about if you ever have a problem in the third chakra, one of the ways that you can help overcome it is do two such actions every day, selfless acts helping others if you have problems in your third chakra. Oh, Now, I don't remember you ever telling me that before, and so that is, to me, very helpful because there are so many people who struggle on, um, you know, being caught up in themselves and not necessarily Mm -hmm. realizing it. And so taking a moment and doing someone else or living in service, as as I like to think of it, for Mm -hmm. others without the expectations, right? Without putting any expectations on it. So what you do, you do out of the goodness of your heart and out of the selfishness of yourself, right? Right. And, you know, of course, not always the easiest thing to do, Dee, because sometimes selfless acts – You know, like sometimes when we give a gift and we look for a thank you, a gift given with conditions is really not a gift. And yet I've never met anybody who didn't like some kind of acknowledgement, like even my Mm -hmm. teacher, Dr. Motoyama. You know, if I was to tell him, oh, gee whiz, Dr. Motoyama, you did that really well. Of course he would say, oh, well, thank you very much. So I think there's a lot, especially with respect to the third chakra, about our motivation for doing something. Is the motivation self or selfless is it selfish or just self you know how do we connect to the motivation behind our actions in how we want due regard for what we represent as unique beings so one of the things in there i i listed and, and i'd really like to hear your opinion about how the mind cannot do what the chakra does and how the mind tends to do the opposite of what a chakra represents what do you think about that? Well, when when you're using your mind to um, and and we're talking little mind, not big mind, right? So yeah, when yeah. you're using when you're using your mind and you're acting rather than um, 
you know, <clears throat> embracing or using the feminine principle of, of being in the flow. When you're using your mind, you can be pushing, you can be pulling, you can be, you're not taking the moment to stop and feel and observe and uh, be a part of the whole process because your mm -hmm. mind tells you things have to happen now and things have to happen this way and you're never good enough or you never can accomplish this or those people are doing this and you should be doing that. Like your mind, it, your mind chatters with you on things of utter, of no importance quite often. Yeah, and like so, like comparing yourself to others. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you get out of your mind, um, like I, there's a meditation that I do, uh, you know, bringing myself down into my heart center. When you get out of your mind and you pay attention to what is really going on and tuning into that, uh, you, you really understand on a much higher level the, the purity of what the chakras have to offer or, you know, what the, the, how the chakra works as a giver of truth or, or as a, a as a charismatic, I'm not going to say this right. Charismatic. 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 Leader, yeah, you're on it. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's about, it's about living in faith and trust as much as anything else. Mm -hmm. And when you're to live in faith and trust is is really to get out of the little mind and to be open. Right. And not always easy to do. So no. if, the, if the third chakra is in its lower aspect, what happens is the mind can't do what a chakra does because your mind is formed in this dimension, you know, through your five senses. Chakras are not limited to space or time, and this is why it's been so difficult for the public to grasp, because how do you talk about something that's not limited to space or time, and yet we know exists, it's been written about for thousands of years, and scientifically proven to exist, and yet these are centers, these chakras are not just centers of energy, like fuel well, they're or electricity, they're centers of consciousness, and so because of this opposition, the mind tends to sublimate not sublimate but subject itself to a lower way of looking at things because it, the mind is not anything but temporal and linear until we start to awaken ourselves so the opposite if you're a person who has a third chakra well the third chakra is about personal power so then your mind might say well i'm really not powerful i really don't have any power i don't have any power to affect that change so your chakra would then help set up lessons in your life where you would come to learn that it was never whether you had power, it was whether you were using the power that you have. And right. so these, these lessons in all of us are quite automatic. We really don't have to do anything but let these lessons come forth because they are our higher self guiding us into what's called emancipation from the illusion of this dimension. That's a heavy word. Emanci eman Why don't we explain that? Emanci emanci Emancip emancipation. Emancipation means freedom from. So if you emancipate yourself from illusion, it means you become free of the illusion of separation, that, that we believe we're separate from what we seek, when in fact everything is connected to everything. And science has been verifying this. And even so... You know, science can tell you a lot about things. It just can't tell you why things happen. It can tell you how, and it can tell you what, but it can't tell you why. And so this is where every person for themselves must have this unique, introspective, personal, spiritual path where they awaken themselves. And again, spiritual awakening is emancipation from the illusion, and you start to really recognize the unity in all things. So an example, <clears throat> let's say a person awakens their third chakra. Well, then they start to understand in much more detail what's really going on behind the person's words who's speaking to you. So let's say someone's ah, talking to you yes. about something and they're revealing something, but your incisive psychic abilities of the third chakra helps you reveal the real story, the real truth behind what they're saying so that you can really behold the fullness of this person much, much more deeply than just their words convey. 
Right. You understand where they're coming from on a more personal mm-hmm. level because the third chakra is all about the person in, as in the personality of, of what is going on right here and right now. Indeed. And and so I, I yes, I totally understand that. And and I also um you know know that that brings up great dilemmas then because you know how can you live in that right action or in um that spiritual truth all the time. Like that that is very difficult. You know, you have different things going on in your life every day like um a uh, co-host who is reading something totally <laughs> but you know what well, I mean yeah, you get that's, distracted you, right I, and, you and, and we're together you know and, and me um, you know taking you off subject a little bit because it's humorous and it's good radio <clears throat> to show our humanity you know and that we don't always stick to the script that's just us being human you know yeah yeah um, I I one thing that I struggle with with the third chakra is that I often fall, um, even though I I understand and I see what's going on, but a, a true person who is living in the lower aspects of their chakra can be very convincing as a manipulator of everything that's going on around them. And they can yeah. be quite the storyteller and quite the... You know, um, they can be very, very good at what they do. And that is one thing, you know, I I have always, I've always, because I'm the type of person who expects good in everybody. And, mm-hmm. and I, or I see the good in everybody and I don't mm-hmm. necessarily want to see anything else, right? So I do, I, I do have a tendency to... Um, to sometimes get walked on a little bit by people who are third chakra dominant. Well, and to your point, when a person um, issues forth their personal desires, there's usually some form of motivation that's underlying what they are doing or conveying or what they are communicating in some way. And so the thing about the third chakra is if you wanted to use your third chakra in the best light, then your motivation for doing anything would be innocence. Right. So that's how motivation is very important related to the third chakra because the third chakra is about one's truth, one's uniqueness, and one's power. But if you have all of that, by definition, it makes you a manipulator. But the word manipulator is neither good nor bad. So how you it's choose how it's u- yes. how it's used. So what is your motivation behind the use of your power? You know, are you using it for selfish means? Are you using it to manipulate others in a harmful way, a negative way? Are you using it in a positive way to help other people? And so as you go about your day and you think, okay, how am I using my power today? What is my motivation for what I do in this moment? Is it truly innocent? You know, no hidden agenda, no caveat and so forth. That is a wonderful way to be very mindful of the power in the third chakra. It's never whether you have power. It's that you have power. So, you know, another aspect of the third third chakra is, is those um, that procrastinate, Mm -hmm. right? They, they, they have Mm -hmm. all this stuff in front of them and they know what they need to do, but they self sabotage and, um, procrastinate on it or find excuses which again is self-sabotage so mm-hmm. how how can someone work through that i mean because the third chakra you know it, it it's it really is about who you are so you know how can how can somebody overcome that aspect well first of all you know, sometimes you could be procrastinating without consciously knowing that you are. And other times you do procrastinate because you just don't want to deal with something. Some people don't like confrontation. And right. they and and they look at it as a negative thing and so it causes a lot of consternation. And so if you look at why you're procrastinating, you might come up with some very good reasons. Maybe it's not time to deal with it. But in terms of the third chakra, the way I've defined it in the book is that the procrastination that I'm talking about is when it is time to do something. 
and it is time to, to address the, the whatever it is. But you do it in a spirit of love, in a spirit of conscious, creative collaboration that you want to work together, that you're looking for a great outcome. But one of the things the third chakra does is it asks you to be very authentic. It asks yes. you, what do you feel, Deirdre, compared to everyone else? Well, you're not comparing. It's all about what you uniquely feel as yourself. Say, well, Dr. J, you know, I, I feel like a white phone goes better with things than a black phone. That's just my feeling. Well, you didn't tell me what to do. You simply no. expressed what is your truth. It was not confrontational or contentious, but it did bring forth what you feel uniquely is your truth. Right, and so that's right. that's one that's one way to work without being confrontational or without worrying about what the other person is going to say or whether they're going to approve or disapprove and, and so forth. So one of the challenges then is to really have faith and to trust yourself and mm-hmm. to know that what you are feeling is unique but true to you right. and to pay attention to that and to – Listen to it, maybe even sit with it or journal with it. You know, when when you're dealing with a situation or something, it's it's good to take a look from kind of a stepped back place. You mm-hmm. know, like they say, my, the meditation is is um, not what you think. And when no. you're looking at when you're looking at yourself um, as a beautiful spiritual being, sometimes. It needs to be from that place of not thinking. It needs to be from that place of of um, love, understanding, and compassion. Precisely. And, you know, I think that the key there is love. And it's not just um, love of others, but it's altruistic love, which is beyond personality. Not just for others, but for yourself. And I don't mean self-love like it's all about me. I mean love that you take good care of yourself. Like Yogananda said, of course we have a body. We need to feed it, exercise it, rest it. But we don't become too attached to it because it represents a temporality. It's, it's not permanent. But our spirits are what's permanent. So the third chakra simultaneously teaches you about the uniqueness of what it is to be individuated in this dimension but it also teaches you a higher order of truth that transcends the truth that is so the truth will always transcend itself to the next level it always will because we as human beings are always looking for greater truth because we're more than these physical bodies and our chakras as the conduits the higher consciousness the incisiveness of the third chakra is always causing us to look for a higher truth. We may not always like what we find. <laughs> true, but, true. But uh, at the same time, that's what's happening, and that's why it's happening. So if you were to sum up the chakra in three words, how would you do that, or maybe five? I am truth. I am truth. Yeah. And I, you know, listeners, I think that would be a great um, uh, mantra or a something that you could those that are struggling in understanding who they are, and um, you know, possibly feeling a lot of self doubt, or mm-hmm. you know, that would be a great something to write down as an affirmation that you could put somewhere and see every day. Um, read it out loud or read it quietly to yourself, but just to acknowledge, you know, just what a beautiful spiritual being that you are. And you are the truth. You are truth, right? Precisely so. And the truth will make itself known to us as we keep searching for it. And this is natural it's normal. It's not meant to be hurtful. It's not to be not meant to be contentious. But generally, you know, when we have a problem, there's usually something within ourselves that needs to be looked at. And a lot of us don't like that. Some sometimes we don't like to look at certain things about ourselves that is a truth that's coming forth. And then the other times, you know, you know the joke, right? The truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Is that you yes. know, sometimes yes. we yes. come we come to a higher level of truth. And we just feel we're not quite ready or we just really don't want to address it yet. We don't want to but admit it. 
yeah. but it'll keep coming around. Dr. Motoyama said that it's better to face a karma head on than to put it off for later in this life, he said, or much worse if you put it off till the next lifetime. Well, in my experience, when I put something off that I really need to pay attention to, it will keep showing up on many different levels in many different ways until mm-hmm. finally I have no choice but to deal with it. So, you know, I totally, I totally agree with you and I totally understand. And, you know, it, it, the third chakra is one of the most interesting chakras and it's also one of the larger chapters in your book of Eye of the Lotus. So Yeah, yeah, it, and... Uh, it, there's more you can read. You can read uh, Theories of the Chakras by Dr. Motoyama, also Awakening of the Chakras and Emancipation by Dr. Motoyama. Uh, that has everything from yoga mudras and asanas to uh, the, the theory and practice, even going down to the nadis and the meridians. You can get those books at cihs.edu, cihs.edu. And our and website... Right now, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, and right now, Dr. Jalasic is teaching a course on the chakras through CIHS. And if you need more information or want to find more information, email me at info at lightnews.org. And again, mm-hmm. like Dr. Jalasich was just going to say, visit our website, www.lightnews.org, for all upcoming events uh, and special programs that we're offering, such as at the end of this month, you can learn mediumship online or in person in Calgary and that will be um, on October 29th and then on October 30th we are having an open house discussion all day on the doors doors uh, blah, 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 I can't remember what we called it oh, now doors of consciousness doors of consciousness and it's right. and we're regarding the chakras so right. more information on our website www.lightnews.org and we have a brand new healers training group starting on the same days, November 12th and 13th in San Diego and in Calgary. If you've ever wanted to really get into the chakras and to heal and do healing energy work at the level of the chakras, this course is for you. As of this year, I will have over 500 students and graduates in this program over 18 years of doing this training. So if you're interested, November 12th and 13th in San Diego and in Calgary, Canada, get a hold of us, sign up, register. You'll be glad you did. I'm co-teaching that with you, so that's going to be lots of fun. It's going to be a lot, a great weekend. While you're in San Diego, I will be in Canada. So, yeah, listeners, if you're if you're interested, please do let us know. It's it's a lot of fun. So I think that the the main understanding and the main purpose, or what you would like to take home today from the aspects of the chakras, is that you know the third chakra is a very important chakra in understanding who we are as ourselves, as a being here in this bio body suit on, on this plane of life. And uh, you can find out more by visiting um, the website or reading Dr. Jellicist's book, Eye of the Lotus, which you can find on Amazon. Absolutely. And there's another book called I Can Relate which is about how we relate to each other based on different chakra dominance that you can also find on Amazon. And we are here for you. Deirdre and I really like doing these conversations without a guest because it allows us to talk about things just she and I are super interested in doing. <clears throat> and so I think in uh, shows uh, going forward from today, well, I think we'll talk about the other chakras as well. Remember, these are all recorded and they're available on iHeartRadio and Speaker. If you can't join us live today, you can always listen to and or download these shows much later. So as always, dear listeners, Deirdre and I are here. We are in service. We like the uh, the no shit type of spirituality. We're not into the fluffy, <laughs> airy, fairy. We're not into the tinfoil hat and flat earth society. You know, we're here to help you as best we can. So as always, as always, may the principles of harmlessness and compassion be the ever-present, ever-constant guide of your every intention, your every thought, 
and your every action. And so it is, and so it shall be. It is done. Stay attuned, everyone. Thank you for joining Light News Radio, where you are self-empowered for your whole being. Connect with us at www.lightnews.org.